from Sweden, Frank from Norway, the whole lot. And also, uh, normally, uh, the, the first 15 minutes, lots of people keep logging in. So, uh, yeah. because of that, we don't know how good the bandwidth will be. So, um, in a few minutes, uh, I'm going to be cruel and shut down your cameras. Very sorry. Nothing personal. Uh, just for the bandwidth so that we can hear uh, uh, Ronald better. I'm going to keep as quiet as possible in the background and just uh, do my best to welcome him. And uh, so it's, it, I'm ver very happy that you like this idea about just having a, uh, a webinar without a guest. But so because as far as I understand and what I get uh, told by people contacting me all the time is that so many are so alone and feel that they don't have anyone to talk to about these things and, and so on. So. Mm. Excellent. Uh, I'll do that. Also, I've invited, uh, let's see if he comes on, but I've invited Dane Wigington, uh, the world's leading expert when it comes to chemtrails and geoengineering. I also invited uh, St. John Hunt, which is E. Howard uh, uh, Hunt and uh, Dorothy Hunt, both of them working for the CIA. Uh, she was killed by one president and his father was part of killing another one. So a very, very special story. And also he's a great guy, fantastic singer. And so I've, I've asked him to bring along his guitar and, and sing some songs for us as well, as, uh, as well as sharing his uh, incredible story. So, well, and there you go, Ronald. Welcome to this. It's... <laughs> Say again, please. You invited also uh, belly dancers. I didn't hear that. You also invited belly dancers. No, no belly dancers this time. At this point, no. But um, if you want to, Ronald, uh, bring yeah. them on and I'll be happy to get it going. Anyway, it is now a little more than uh, at least 8.30 here in the evening. It is. It's the same for Ronald, for the same for some of you, but I know in Brazil, I have absolutely no idea. Maybe it's in the middle of the morning or in the day. I don't know. But uh, I see also Ayub's friend is here. Welcome, Ayub's friend. And so let's get the show off the road. And uh, so if I could please ask you to um, shut down your cameras so that we get some better band bandwidth. And uh, should you have any problems whatsoever, uh, the email is webmaster at lightonconspiracies.com. Also, uh, we always um, uh, film all of these webinars, uh, so you can go in and film, uh, find them on the website. Uh, the, the password is always the same, compassion, that's the name, compassion, so that you can see not only this, but uh, also all the other ones in the future as well. So, Ronald. It's a, it's a really great pleasure to welcome you. Uh, I, I know you've got a very tight schedule. This is also why we yes. had to do it on a Thursday evening. Yes. But I, I really welcome uh, courageous people like yourself uh, because I don't know if everybody understands what it takes to step forward when you're up against the really dark powers, when you've been in the belly of the beast and been playing around with these uh, forces then to take the step, step out and it, try to expose them, helping the rest of us to understand what's really going on. That takes a lot of guts. So uh, it was a really great pleasure to meet you in, in uh, the Netherlands not yeah. long ago. We did a uh, conference there together in a beautiful, beautiful church in Breda. And uh, I was really impressed by, especially Ronald's, incredible honesty he's brutally honest when it comes to himself uh, and also his background his uh, desires what led him into the position where uh, well that started this whole thing so Ronald uh, welcome 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 to to this webinar and would you mind introducing yourself and then maybe go back in time and tell us from the start and just the story and in the meantime people can write questions in the in the chat i will then read them uh, 
to you. And thank you so much, Will and Susie, for backing this whole thing up and helping us uh, with, together with Kim in the chat. So yeah. welcome, Ronald. Yeah, thank you for being here. It's great to be here. It's great to have uh, all the people uh, joining your uh, invitation because it was your invitation to us all. So it's nice to have this podium. But where do you want to? Where do you want me to to start? On the moment I was born, just briefly going through it, or just more the well, the most important parts like I should. I, I, no, I I thought about your childhood, uh, some of the things that led you in on this way. Uh, that got you into a situation where you were see searching for, yeah. for power and control and then where that then led you. Yeah. I hope my sound is okay because sometimes when you are talking, there is a sort of delay and then it's, your voice is not completely understandable. Then it's really like yeah, a computer who tried to talk. So sometimes there is a bit of delay in your commitments. So I hope my my part is fine. I hear you fine. This okay. is okay. But this is what I'm talking about with the bandwidth. That is why we asked everybody to shut down their cameras. Okay. So that yeah. we get it better. Yeah. Uh, you know, I I remember the moment we both were there on stage in in the Netherlands in Breda, and you asked me some questions about how kids are raised up in, um, I don't call them high society, I call them actually the most lowest societies you can have on this planet. But um, most of the people uh, think they are the high, highest powers um, on earth. And that's because of they are holding actually most of the assets of this world most of the property, they, they own actually the whole world now, nearly. It's just a few, few um, parts who are not theirs. It's like, let's say the 99,99% .99 they own now. And that started uh, a long time ago. But we, we have this talk on stage about children who are born in this well, old, wor old world powerful families. And it's not only my story, it's also the story of them because they all were born. And on the moment they were born, like me, like all the other children on earth, there was nothing, nothing wrong. It was fine. It was not that you come in this planet and you start to play with another child or you say, no, you're a Muslim, I don't play with you. That bullshit is, is coming up later on in our lives that we start to separate us from each other. But in, in the beginning, when we come from the source of light, we are all connected and we all are a, a sort of unity and diversity. But to get people um, um, as, as um, in, in track of the old uh, powerful system uh, to be <coughs> a, a real getting a real career in the old world like your father or mother are the most powerful ones on, on this planet who decide to destroy a, a, um, a country or not they have to prepare you for this uh, job for this role and this kind of the preparing was more or less the same like I was prepared. In my case, it was not really done on purpose because my father didn't have plans for me because he was not one of the rulers of this planet. But because of his damage, uh, he was damaged as well in, in, in before, before the war and during the Second World War. So a damaged child becoming a father, um, doing actually the same, also damaging me. And that was um, so heavily that I, I'm in the position now to, to confirm 
uh, of because of my own experience in, in life, because my, my first 11 years of my youth were really destroying the child. Uh, my child was becoming the inner child, completely protected in a, in a heavy bunker, and uh, a bunker who even can um, survive atomic wars. That's how far you become inside of yourself, locked up, um, developing a sub-person who is not giving any shit about life on this planet, actually having real joy to destroy life on this planet. And that's all because of um, being in a program of destruction from the beginning of your life till later on. And for me, it was till my 11th. But later on, I jump now a bit forwards. Later on, when I was in the position in my first life, the last five years of my first life, it ended in the end of 90, 1994. The last five years, when I was in the real position to get in the financial world in the highest positions to serve them, the powers that be, the old powers, I was becoming friends with not all of them, but some of them. And when you become friends with, with one of your clients, you start to recognize each other based on, on the stories we both share about our youth. <coughs> and this was coming up on stage in Breda, um, Ole, when you were asking me something. And I didn't say it now, but I get it already in my body, all these vibrations, because it's very heavy, this kind of things. This, the, in the so-called elite, because they are not elite, but how to call them, the powers that be, if they get children, sometimes the first one is sacrificed for more power. And if they don't do this, the children they raise up, they put them, uh, for example, in electric caves to, get, to break them, to break the child in all the way they can. This is in the system of getting, be, being trained to be later on one of the most powerful persons on this planet. First, they break you down and they do it from the beginning, from the beginning. And I, they were doing it with me too, but separate from the real powers. But it's, um, it's unbelievable um, because sometimes pe people are saying, oh, the powers in this planet, they are reptilians. No, 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 no. I know the stories, but they are not reptilians. They are so called blooded so called they are so in the freezer because they were trained that way like they did with me with my father and my family situation they trained me to be the coldest one on earth with my consciousness um, in the freezer and not on 18 degrees but on 100 degrees so when when i was coming out of this hell this family situation completely beaten up, tortured, uh, emotional, physical, uh, whatever, well, think about real horrible things and, and you get more or less there. For them, the powers on this planet is the same story. And the fun, well, it's not funny, but the most funny part of this all is that the parents who are doing this with the children, they are convinced, really convinced, that they love their children and they are giving the best they can to prepare them for their role in the future. They really love their children. So if you're not used to it, it's completely crazy to, to hear this and to think about what I'm saying. It's compare it with this. If you are a father and a mother and you get children, in my first life I did not, uh, the same you get this vaccines program and you love your children and you are not aware and you give your children the vaccines because you are doing the best for your child. In the meanwhile, that's in my second life, I become aware of um, the, the prescriptions for doctors 
downloaded by, by uh, the healthcare uh, division of European Union. And then if you read the, the descriptions where the medics um, access to have, and you read all the additives who are in these vaccines, then you become aware like, oh my God, I, want, I don't want to give my children this anymore. So I, with this example, I want to make clear that if you don't know better, you really believe you're giving your child the best you can. And with the vaccines in my first life, with my first two children, I gave them and their immune system is damaged. They're so-called healthy, but not really healthy. If I compare my first two children with my last two children, wow, big difference in the immune system. But that's just uh, um, an example of what I'm talking about. If it's about the powers who are, where I was working for, and with some I become friends, I mean, they were going through the same hell or worse than I did. And this is the only reason why they are able, like I was, to destroy, to destroy life on earth. Really doesn't, we, we didn't care about the people in general. They were products, they were chess, trash. They were just use them, fuck them and throw it away. That's human people. And in my first life, when I came out of my youth, because when I was nine, um, there was an organization who is watching children, uh, a sort of childcare organizations. They noticed through school that everything was going really, really bad for me. And there was an investigation and then they discover all these horrible things. So they put me out of the family in a place where they um, take care of people, uh, children in this case, who are heavily damaged by child abuse and, and sacrificed rituals and all horrible things. So I was coming when I was nine, I came in a Catholic, org it was organized by Catholics, center to protect the child against all the violence of the past. And guess what? There, there it was actually that much of hell that I really start to cry for my father and mother because um, there it was normal to abuse the children and this was done by uh, nuns and by uh, brothers, so male and female, and they used uh, um, the available children and I was included and in the beginning you really don't know what what is happening with you and you start screaming for your father who was a monster and your mother um, so so and and the crazy thing about that is it, it damaged you completely again because the first year was hell but you start to discover sometimes things are also pleasant so then you get completely mixed up because you're forced to be in sexual rituals, uh, rituals and all kind of crazy things. Some, some people were wearing masks because they also invited guests. Some were not with masks. Later on, when, uh, when you are adult, sometimes you recognize these powerful people who are joining this kind of um, uh, rituals and, and sexual abuse. It's all max mixed up. So when I was uh, released after after my 11th when my mother was up, uh, out of a divorce I was already a, a completely adult and my child was completely locked up like I shared before in a big bunker so there he, there he is Ronald 12 years old coming home to mother who is just divorced still a mess because she was uh, also very much suffering not having a, a, enough food uh, on the table and then I start my career to be independent and arranging money. And that was my start. And I'm not telling this not, uh, like an excuse that if you become criminal, that uh, if you have a rough youth, then you have a big and huge uh, excuse to be criminal. No, 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 it's not an excuse. It was my decision to choose that path. I'm responsible for that. 
But so, Ronald, when you, you told me that uh, when you were about 10 or 11, you decided I'm going to destroy everything I can. I'm going to control as much as I can. I'm going to be the richest man on earth. Yes. Is that uh, correct? That, that was coming up in the, in, the, in the period between 9 and 11. Uh, all these thoughts and decisions were um, uh, made in that period. When I was coming out, 12, it was really starting to do it. Uh, because the situation of my mother was also an excuse, like she didn't have a lot of money and she, we have some family support. But I started already... Um, stealing food in, sh in shops and, and finding money to get, to get a bit of extra support. But yes, you're right. The, 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 the real turn in this, the hate, because th that was all in between 9 and 11 when I have all these uh, child abuse things, these sexual things. But the pr to practice your decisions was, was when I was 12. And, and yes, um, I, I, I hated actually, or nearly every, everyone on this planet, especially the adults. It was um, not, not in the case with my mother, but even with my mother, I was building up already a sort of distance. Like if she was coming too near to me, I, I start already to go in a sort of defense. So, yes, in, in that period, um, the blueprint was already uh, completely clear. I beca became a hater of the human race. And my um, final goal was to destroy ac everything, including myself, of course. Um, that was my main goal. Um, and the way to this main goal was to become the most rich person and powerful person on this planet because if you are the most rich and powerful person on this planet you can push the buttons to destroy so yes in a in a nutshell that that's um the first part of my youth the rest after it it was is i can share of course too like how i became from my 12 till uh, nearly 33 because uh, 94 I, I was still 32 but I mean the the 20 years I was building up myself with this goal I nearly managed it nearly nearly I was I was close I was close because I was really in the fi last five years I was really on my way and I'm getting more and more power. Then, unfortunately, I'm talking now if I'm in my first life, because then it was unfortunately, they start to invite me for something who really was cracking me on that moment. And that was that um, in, in being invited. I was also in the, in the Church of Satan and they were worshiping Lucifer. And for me, it was really a joke. But afterwards, I, I know it was not a joke, this whole thing. But when they made this invitation, and the first time I, I put this in the world, wow, it was like a volcano. Like a relief, but the emotions, everything was, was coming out. The first time I was sharing this uh, in my life, it was really huge on, in public. That was about the, the invitation to sacrifice children. That was really really that was that was and it's still it's i mean wow that was my breaking point in my career it was not my turning point but it was my breaking point because i couldn't fulfill my role anymore i, I was uh, falling apart step by step but but between the 12 and the 32 is a huge story of course of of things what i did in my life to become um, a top criminal um, serving the big money for the top players of this world and <laughs> Ronald, can i can i ask you you were talking about destroying yourself as well that was part of the the goal of how, course. how is your feeling towards yourself everything i mean you know what it was 
everything was bad. Everything was evil. I believed all the bad, the bad things, the black things, the evil things, the dark things, however you want to call it, is in the human themselves. So it was including me because I was not better than anyone else. So I was um, actually blaming myself as well for all the horror. Of course, afterwards, I can look at it completely different, but it's the first life. I'm now in the first life, so I'm talking out of the first life. It's now sometimes a bit difficult because, of course, in my second life, after my rebirth, I become more and more aware. My consciousness was growing. So the old part was mixed with the new part. And then afterwards, of course, you understand that it, there was nothing to blame yourself. Of course, you made maybe the wrong decisions, but you get aboard, you get a bit of compassion with yourself. You can forgive yourself as well. Like I was, for, um, I was also forgiven by the people who, who I, I, I met afterwards, also in my second life, I start to meet people who are becoming direct or indirect a victim of my ac actions in my first life. And that's more than coincidence. I was once with a friend uh, in a dinner and he had a new girlfriend. And we were talking about uh, my uh, work when we dropped the Italian lira as an attack to attack the economy of Italia, because we got uh, a lot of bets on it, on the destruction, temporary destruction. And his new girlfriend told me that she still knows the period I was doing that because her family and the family company was completely destroyed by the actions I did. <coughs> and so many years later, you get through one of your friends who has a new girlfriend. You get confronted with the other side, the victims of your actions. This is beyond coincidence. How is this possible? I was facing this many times. Maybe I did too much destruction. I, I don't know that it's not so um, absurd to meet um, your your. Um, victims of the past but for me it was really like wow how is this possible and this this was not once several times i met people who were so, so how did it start? how did it start how did you sort of get into this business world and and start getting getting up in the ranks yeah well um when i was 12 and and starting to do this uh, little um arrangements uh, to get enough food on the table um, i was already uh, collecting for example all the items of uh, world war war number two in that period so that is in the in the 70s uh, i was collecting this kind of things and especially the things from the germans because they were of the most value and in that period, I also dig in, in the country to find uh, old um, um, war uh, ammunition and, and all those kind of things. So I start to collect um, things of the Second World War. And then on uh, flea markets, I start buying and selling this kind of items. I also start to steal out of uh, shops uh, cartoons. Eh? And then I had 100 cartoons to sell on the flea market. I was stealing um, a lot of toy things. You know, I was just stealing <coughs> the whole year in shops everywhere and nobody was catching me. And I collect a lot of things to sell on the flea markets. And as a child, of course, so innocent, you, you, you get away of it. And nobody was paying attention of what I wa was arranging because I did it already I in the shadow. Um, I also, in, in springtime, I cut in, 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 um, in the cities and in the places where I lived, in the villages, uh, when the flowers were coming up in, in general, you have these fields 
where um, the people from City Hall, um, they, they have it in the public service to have all the, well, um, flowers. F the flowers who are coming up in the public gardens. And I was cutting them all. You know, when, when the flowers were coming up, I cut them all. So it was always a mystery where the flowers were going. But I cut them all and put them in a small bouquet. And I was going um, ding dong to the doors. Ding dong. Do you want to sell? Uh, to, do you want to buy this? Uh, buy this uh, nice flowers for the, uh, the good good um, girls I was representing. Like uh, I, I, you know, just imagine something like um, the poor kids of the third world or whatever. But the main, the good goal was myself. Mm -hmm. So that I can go on for hours, of course, but this was just the beginning. Then when I was 14, I think more or less 14, um, I start to uh, copy money and make uh, money myself. So I put a, a, a Dutch bill, I put it on the window and then I put a, a, trend, a, a Blanco white paper over it and with, um, with, um, pencils color pencils i start um drawing every detail of this build yet and it took me uh, several days to create for example uh, 25 guilders on my own and they were so nice and so good copied handmade i gave them to my mother and she was sometimes going out with uh, with another friend to a bar so it was a bit shady dark and she, she gave it to the barman to buy, buy uh, their drinks. And they accepted because it was so good of quality. She didn't um, do it. She called the bartender back like, ho, 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 didn't you notice? And then, of course, he was putting it through a light and discovered there was no watermark. So it, for her, it was just a joke and saying, yeah, my son is making these kind of things. <laughs> so for her, it was completely innocent, but not for me, not at all. Because I gave them, gave them out myself as well. You know? So I create my own money and gave it out in, in shops. Um, but I was also on school because that was um, also needed. And... Um, most of the time, because of my messy life, I was kicked out of uh, the, the class. But when I have the exams, I always pay the best students money. So when the exams were there, I just sit near the best, the bright guys, the, the ones who were really studying, and I pay them, and I copied the answers who are needed to, to have a, a good, um, good number in your exams. So this is how I arranged all my diplomas when in my youth. Then um, I have to go uh, to the military. That was um, uh, by law arranged in Holland, but I arranged that also in a different way, like becoming a professional uh, soldier um, um, uh, in a training to become um, an um, hmm. What is in English? It's not the officer, but the one between. It's like the, corporal. The, the, no, the sergeant, the sergeant train. Oh, sergeant. Yeah. So choosing this path, I must, I was called for, for a uh, tour. I was called for a tour that was arranged by, by law. But to go in a path of um, going for professional, you get higher paid already. Although you're still um, going for your tour, but going, applying for professional, you get already higher paid. Then I choose also to be um, 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 uh, placed in, in, in abroad, not in Holland, but in Germany, in a NATO camp with uh, Canadians and English and so, you get extra paid. So I was always looking for the money, how I get more and more paid. And then I get uh, this tax-free uh, cigarettes and uh, liquors, uh, alcohol, and um, all that very cheap tax-free um, things available. And I start to buy them and transport them illegal 
over the uh, over the the borders uh, to Holland to sell it to friends and family because they will really want to buy it because it was cheaper than they have to buy it in Holland. So even in the military and after the military, I was uh, starting to be um, quite involved in uh, illegal transport smuggling, uh, tax-free uh, cigarettes and 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 uh, and uh, alcohol. Uh, liquors but it, it sounds to me like you were a super entrepreneur even though you started yeah, yeah. going it, to the legal yeah but when i came out of the army i start also uh, to register myself in the chamber of commerce with uh, car dealing because i want to explain or to cover my real life um because w when i was in the army i c could explain hey i have my high salary because i'm uh, so-called in, in training for professional military. I'm abroad, so I get all these risk payments. So I could explain how I get all this money. Okay. Also a bit out of, well, these illegal things. But out of the army, I had to register myself uh, officially with uh, car dealing. And later also with import export and even with a fashion um, fashion line uh, for um, sh short short uh, short uh, um, for, for ladies it was uh, for ladies uh, we did some fashion and we did it from Istanbul um, so but all this import export this car dealing and even this uh, lady fashion line who was di distributed to um, franchise um, um, companies um, was all cover up. Of course, it made money, but the real money was coming from the the underworld, the the the, the gray world, the black world, the the, the illegal um, trading I did because it started with the smuggling. But you know, before you know, you get also weapons offered, you get drugs offered, you get you get all the things who are available in this um, commu uh, in in the in the black community or in the criminal communities. So step by step, you go deeper and deeper and deeper. And if you are good in the things you're doing, the circles are not that, that, that huge. So you're starting to climb, your star start to rise. And when I was around 25, I get already jobs offered um, by uh, secret services, uh, also from uh, Russia. And of course, now we have this anti-campaigns on Russia. So when I'm saying Russia, whoa, uh, another one, you see Russians are bad. No, they are not bad at all. Um, it's, it's inside of the humans. And in that time, when I was 25, I get jobs offered to dump in the international market uh, American dollars. But these American dollars were not printed in America by the Federal Reserve. They were printed in the East. And they were distributed through Russia, through the secret services, to top criminals or criminals who are have who have great ambitions to um, to drop them in trades. Like um, when you have, in my case, I had army dealers. So arm dealers, um, so weapon dealers, um, drugs dealers who are. Um, in bigger quantity dealing and they were able to buy this 100% uh, top quality American dollars from us with discount. And of course, I had my commission too, because between the buying and selling, there was commission for me too. And this is the way how we get millions of millions and later higher amount of monies we get it in the market through the illegal circuit, circuit mm -hmm. of arm dealers, uh, weapon dealers, and, and, and drugs dealers, and um, terrorist organizations. All this, well, not highest, but quite, quite some amount of money flow. Uh, I get involved of this uh, uh, as well. And, and later on, you get from other secret services the same story. You get also uh, a lot of drugs and other things offered. So you're, you're, you're climbing up the ladder and if you succeed in all the missions you do, like, okay, he deserves a medal, he's doing this job um, because it takes a lot of um, guts and, and, and you, you have, uh, your nerve system has to be uh, top. Um, it, it's, it's high level playing already, 
but still it was low level the, the thing if you compare it with the last five years but Ron you know Ronald? Yes. Can I can I just say that uh, I'm friend with a CIA whistleblower. His name is Chip Tatum, and <clears throat> he was one of uh, he worked under all the presidents from uh, Nixon and upwards, directly under them on sort of on a speaking level, uh, often as their pilot. And exactly what you're talking about, there were uh, printer shops in Iran printing uh, dollars. Uh, there was a whole thing uh, with these printers and uh, the amounts of dollars that was there yeah. where they were dealing with uh, Khomeini after the, in, in the Iran contrast thing. And yeah. all. So it sounds to me that a lot of the money you're talking about came from Iran of all places. Uh, well, I don't know if it came from Iran. Um, the, the funny, well, of course it's not funny. It's, it's the coincidence was uh, this year I was invited by the International Tribune of Natural Justice in London to testify about um, um, human trafficking, child trafficking, organ har harvesting organs, so organ trafficking, uh, child abuse, uh, child sacrifice, all the things were there. And the third day when I was actually leaving to catch my plane, I get in contact with, with, with someone who was in the time I was involved with this um, top quality dollars because the quality of these dollars was actually better than the original ones from America. <laughs> you, yeah, no, it was really, it was only the Americans discovered it only by the numbers, the serial numbers. That's how they, because they have a registration of the serial numbers of their own prints. So when they get huge amounts of so <coughs> new, brand new, better dollars than they have themselves, then they start to become aware of this attack because the, the, the reason behind this was, it is, was all economic warfare. It's economic warfare. And also the Americans were doing the same with the ruble against the Russians. So, in this level, all the countries are printing the currencies of other countries to attack them in an economic way. But I didn't care about this. The destruction was for me enough and making money as well. I was only interested in destruction and making money. So, when, so, when, so you talk about, when you talk about this destruction when it comes to this money, what, what was your goal with this destruction? Did, were you aimed in any certain direction? Well, if, if, you, if, if they, they didn't succeed, by the way, I mean, America is still there, Russia is still there, Ira Iran is still there, all the countries are still there, but the, the, the motivation you have behind it is, okay, now we have a chance, if, if I was putting the American dollar on the market, of course you see a big power, and big power can be destroyed if, if, if you have enough uh, extra money on the market, you get a hyperinflation, you get crisis, and you get uh, a country on their knees. I knew that already from, from that time. It was like you have a high quality wine. If you put in enough water, the value of the wine is gone. It's, it doesn't taste well anymore and you can't sell it anymore. And that's what you create with more money in the market than registered and given out by the printing of America themselves. You destroy, in the end, you destroy a country. And the funny part afterwards is, of course, that um, the Americans themselves are printing after um, they let the gold standard going uh, uh, in the period of Nixon, it was around 73 or 72, 73, 74 in the last century. When they leave the gold standard and they step in this uh, connection with uh, the petrodollar, um, they started themselves to print unlimited money in dollars. So they, they are bringing their own dollar in inflation, more inflation, <coughs> I mean, the whole value of the dollar, if you compare it with 100 years ago, it's, it's only now 1% left of the value they had it. 
they had 100 years ago. So now they are destroying their cells. So there is no need anymore of economic attacks on the dollar. But it was in that time, in that time I, I'm, I'm talking about. Uh, we were still in the cash because now everything is digital. I think now only 3% of the whole cash worldwide, 3% is still cash. 97% uh, is digital. And the time I was working, most of, of money was still cash. Um, <laughs> truckloads, truckloads of cash. Um, it was normal for us to, uh, I mean, for us, there was no, I mean, if you are working with su such a lot of money, you're not impressed anymore. It's just old paper. Like you have to, some, some people are collecting old newspapers to sell it for the price in kilos of old paper. For us, money was the same. You, you, it, it's nothing. It is nothing, but that day it was really, so yeah. But, so Ronald, when, when you start losing respect for money, well, the driving force to get more money, does, does that sort of ease out or are you, is it, does it change into a, a strive for more power and control? Yes. Or yes. the, the, is that the next step? Yeah, well, of course, um, if, if you have your first 10,000 guilders or something, wow, you know, uh, your first score and this and that. But then later on, if you have a score of 30,000 guilders a day, uh, it was not always like that. Sometimes you also lose money. Eh? And that was all on your own account. Eh? You, I mean, if you're working with high, high money, high, high, um, the high powers with huge amounts of money, it's all on your, on your back. You're responsible and your team is responsible. So if you lose money, also on your account. So sometimes you win, sometimes you lose, and 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 the end of the day, of course, you always try to to win. That there is a plus. Uh, but, but did you did you start to see what type of people you were involved with? Did you start fearing for your own safety at times? No, 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 not at all. I, I the more and and this uh, sounds maybe horrible. The more I get involved the more, uh, the higher I was coming, the better it was. Um, it, you know, if, if you start as a criminal, you, you become in the beginning paranoid because you can't trust nobody. In the low levels, it's, it's really like the society I know now. The society I know now are full of snakes. There are not much people who are from the straight, um, from the beginning, they, most of the people they hide. Um, I'm not saying that nobody is honest, but you know, <clears throat> if you meet someone, you never know. That's the world we live in. We are all um, damaged and afraid, so you you don't show yourself in the beginning. So the world of snakes is in the low levels of criminality as well. But the farther you climb in the ladder, the better it gets. More clear appointments, more honesty. So when I was talking about coming in the high regions, the last five years, when I get also access, access um, um, to the trading markets worldwide, and we arranged this um, to get a seat in Bruxelles, and it was arranged by offshores, so your name is not involved. You just buy the offshore and you have the license to be in the trading market and you always use yourself puppets to make the real deals on the floor but when i was coming in the fi last five years i really start to get friends really friends like buddies because we were on the same um we have the same attitude we have the same mentality we have the same emotions the same goals it was really like coming home and this is how I also was becoming with some of them friends and getting the deeper stories of themselves, of the youth. So, um, and this is also a story of hope because if you start to have the insights about the most powerful people on this planet 
and how damaged they are and how empty they are because we were empty when you were giving me the question about you lose the value of money yes we did sometimes to shock the working class i go in a bar where the people who are just coming from from their work working maybe for 1000 guilders a month and they were there on the bar and we come in i just take out one 1000 uh, guilders i uh, take a lighter to start burning my own money and asking them when they were um uh they, they put a cigarette in their mouth and they were searching for a light and then i offer them with this burning 1000 guilders i offer them a light do you need a light and they they oh thank you thank you and then they get in shock like what are you doing you're burning thousands guilders i'm working the whole month for this and then i put it just in the s3 like oh i don't care you know you you and you have a big big laugh about it with your colleagues to to humiliate the people to shock the people who are working their ass off the whole month for this amount of money and you put it in their face to light the cigarettes with the salary of one month this is money was nothing it was trash it was toilet paper you can because it was coming in daily who cares who cares so the value was not later on the the money was just a tool a tool to 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 do whatever you want it's the same with having cars then you have one car then you have two cars in the end you have three cars five cars whatever you buy whatever you do when you're completely empty like i was you're only filling up your holes and it's an and it's an impossible thing you're doing and you need more so you're starting to serve the monster of greed you need more 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 and this is why the 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 people who are now in the trillions they still feel poor they're still alone they feel empty they have nothing they're scared they want most of them want out but they're in their own prison they don't have anything this is why they are so extreme powerful so-called powerful so extreme wealthy they are the most poor people of this planet i was one of them and not in the same level because i was serving them i was not one of the masters myself i was serving them but this this, this is it Ronald, I'm, I'm starting to get a lot of questions here in the chat. Would you be okay if I ask you some of them? Yes, of course. Okay, here uh, it says here, the Brazilian Central Bank, well, I guess we know who that question is from. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the Brazilian Central Bank's president is uh, Ilian Goldfein, an Israeli-born man appointed to the position, not elected. He serves on the BIS board as well. My question is, what role does Brazil have in the financial industry scheme? Well, I don't want to put Brazil in a higher position than someone else. Um, he is talking about two things straight away. Brazil, Central Bank, BIS, Bank of International Settlements. There are only a few exceptions left in this world who are not in the financial central banking system iran is one of them now still brazil is in the same financial system it's uh, connected with the bank of international settlements the central bank of brazil is a member like all the other countries so it's not higher or lower they're all in the same scheme, in the same power structure. And the, the leader of this whole arrangement is the BIS, the Bank of International Settlements. So there is another part on Brazil. Um, Brazil is also a member of the BRICS. The BRICS, the BRICS is another so-called financial organization where um, is uh, involved uh, Brazil, Russia, then the I is, um, who was the I? Because you have, you have, uh, oh yeah, you have China, 
you have Brazil, you have Russia, you have South America. And who is the other one? The BRICS, the BRICS countries. Sorry, um, well, not my field at all. Well, he knows. There is one who knows. But it, 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 you, I just have to look it up myself. I, it, sometimes it's not in my head to know them yeah. all. It's, well, it's India. South India. Thank you. Ha, ha. That was the one. Thank you. India, of course. But um, they're all connected with the BIS. So the thing you get in Brazil, they are part of, of creating a dualistic system because the BRICS is so-called the opposition of the powers we have now in the structure of the normal central banks because the central banks are following the orders from the BIS. So Brazil plays, actually, if you look at the central bank system, they play a double role because they are also involved in the BRICS system. And a lot of people in this world think, oh, their deliberation is coming because um, uh, China and, and, and uh, India as well, of course, and especially also Russia, they are fighting this new world order. Yeah, forget it. <laughs> they are part of the game. They just create the dualistic to to they they um, keep the it's dualist like they keep the dualistic system continue. Because if you want to know what's coming up with this new world order, they really want to have watch China. China is since 2009 it was 2009 the um, playing the role model the blueprint for the whole world this is this is what they want they want to extend the whole china model and that's a BRICS country up so what you're saying about brazil is, is that sort of like part of controlled opposition but in the banking world Yes, they 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 them they play a double um, double role, and okay. um, when he was pronouncing the name, I knew already that he was talking about uh, someone who has um, some Jewish background. But then, of course, you have to question yourself already. Like, what is a Jew? Because they were coming out of this tribe of Judea. And how many are still the real ones? Mm -hmm. And you get this mixture, mixture with the uh, politic Zionists. Whoa, <laughs> it's all involved. It's all involved. But what, 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 why don't, does he want to know? Is he hopeful yeah. about Brazil? I don't know, but there's a whole lot of line of questions here. Maybe he can ask a follow up. But here, there's another one here. Do the so called elite utilize uh, mundane things? So the, so, so the same as we, the normal people, like uh, smartphones, smart TV, social media, etc. Well, if you look at my my own, old life, it was no. I was a shadow, always, and when I was coming out last year, in um, this. It was going viral around summer 2017. One of the things we got back straight away was, we cannot find anything digital on Ronald Bernard. He must be an actor, he must be fake because we can't find anything. First of all, I was, when I started in my second life um, to go on the internet, I did it only with um, pseudonyms, nom de plumes. We are covering ourselves. It's, it, it's still a, a bit of a habit of me, uh, although I'm now known as Ronald Bernard, of course, but no. Um, they use satellite phones, but I'm talking about the old time. Eh? In the old time, we use satellite phones. We were always behind the screen, so um, 
for secret services was also very hard to follow us, to track us. We, you know, it, the work I did on the highest level, the five years, you have a lot of um, wars and competitions and dualistic games going on. And a lot of power is involved and money is involved. So everything depends on how uh, secure are you working in every detail. So you don't use um, all the things you are used to it now. Mm -hmm. We don't use it. So I assume now in, in, the, in, in this present time, if the, the powers, the real powers are using now <coughs> tools, they always do it with fake identities, fake companies. You never will know who is the real one behind it. It's all coded and never on their own name. So if I was giving in the lecture of 2016 um, some explanation about the real powers with the golden triangle, I mentioned the 13 families to start but because behind this so known people the 13 families behind them is the real power mm -hmm. so you know we we have a banking family in sweden called the wallenberg and their motto is ruling without visibility and uh, i think that really describes it if you if you are walking on the street and you meet a lady or a, a man and he looks like real poor that you get something like oh my god maybe this guy or this lady needs some attention maybe some proper food maybe some money maybe different clothes there is a chance you were meeting one of the most powerful people on this planet Hmm. Do you know H.L. Hunt in, in Dallas, who was uh, one of the richest, he was, I think, at one point, the richest person in the U.S., also involved in the JFK assassination. He was walking around like a vagabond often. Uh, yeah. The same with Ingvar Kamprad from Ikea. He was really low, uh, low key as well. And so it seems like a general uh, theme. In, it's a in protection. It's protection. Yeah. It's protection. We have another question here. Do the elite uh, have people working for them in all social spheres and classes? For example, do they have people infiltrate uh, third world neighborhoods in order to arrange children, women, men for pedophilia, sacrifice, and ritual activities? The power structure you're talking about is a structure of a pyramid, really, pyramid. And in all the layers, they have involvement in all the layers. So also when we have all this alternative and awaken, I don't want to make people paranoid, but you have really look carefully about what kind of fruits are the trees really giving. So you need to know background. You need to know, to, to know the people. They are everywhere. Um, one of the documents I still recommend, not because I'm an anti-Semite, because I really love all the human beings on this planet, included the 12 tribes of Israel, the original tribes. The protocols of the elders of Zion gives you really the blueprint of everything I worked for and I was involved. And in this document, you can read how the structure is created everywhere. In universities, in uh, the schools, in our education system, in the politics, whatever you can imagine, it's involved. And they have influence everywhere. In opposition, it doesn't matter. Everywhere, they are involved. The point is, the involvement they have, they have most of the time inf uh, influences people on 
important positions in organizations. So if you have, for example, MST International, wow, good organization, yes, it is. And 99% of the people are really integral, they are honest, they are really working with the heart. But it's the 1% who is sitting just on one of the key positions who is um, creating this influence of their higher uh, powers. It's everywhere. So yeah. don't get paranoid, but watch <laughs> the people who are in front of you. Mm. Watch them. Watch the fruits. Watch the fruits. Because most of the people worldwide, they are only talking 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 and it's the action the yeah. action what matters a lot is uh, serving the new world order agenda also sp in spiritual spirituality and religions everywhere yeah. uh, the next one there is um, somebody asking her from paula she asked, could you please talk about the federal reserve uh, will it always exist uh, or is there a way to take it down? Well, we know, we all know, or I assume we all know that um, it was in Christmas time, 1913, that um, they passed this bill to give, um, based on actually the representatives of the people of the USA in this case, to turn over the power to private organizations to get the privilege of printing money and asking in their loans also interest, usury. On the moment, the Congress, all the representatives of the people, backed up by the people, decide to change this arrangement because the contract was for 100 years. So actually, we are talking about already an extension. It's a five year that they have an extension already for five years. But on the moment, because you know, it was signed by the Congress. So to make a reverse, you have to do it the same way. And it is possible but it can be only done by the people themselves to be connected with the congressman, <coughs> with all the representatives in politic of America, if they will go for this completely serving the people, you get it done. The same way how they were losing the power because the, the, the people were losing their power. And it's against against uh, all the basics um, of America. They have uh, this basic document, the constitution. It's against it. So Ronald, if uh, let's say that the Congress would say, okay, tomorrow we're gonna say bye-bye to the Federal uh, Reserve Bank. What would the world, how would that affect the world uh, in a very short term? Well, the, huge huge i mean you 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 start to determinate well in this case uh, determinate uh, for america because uh, the federal reserve is also a part of the bigger power it's all um serving the bis in switzerland so then you have already a liberation of america and America is still a big power in this world. So the Americans then, with the 380 million people, with this government, this Congress, are making actually the first step of real liberation of the slavery system we have now worldwide. It depends on the people. And with um, a guy like Trump now uh, elected, you can also nail him because in one of his YouTube uh, promotion videos when he was not elected he promised to take down the bankers 
he promised it. I have this tape still in my computer. You can find it. It's, it's not, not much people are aware of it, but he made this as a promise. So you can remind, the, all the Americans can remind Trump about what he was saying because he's doing things for the Americans. But you can, he can be reminded on this one. And the Congress as well. It's just giving him back his own words. Mm. Because he is playing, and I say this on purpose, he is playing a new role for a new agenda. But it's all depending on the people of America. Because you know what it is? The politicians worldwide, and I know this firsthand because I was in contact with politicians as well, they are followers. And they are following the power who is on that moment in presence. And on the moment, the people are not the power. Because the people of America are not united as one block to say we want to change. On the moment, 300, well, let's say 200 million Americans say we want the liberation, we want this, that, and that, and that. Donald Trump, you were saying before you were elected that and that and that, we want it, make work of it. Because he signed already uh, last year, I think 21 or 23 December, he was signing already a bill about on the moment you are um, violating um, the um, declaration of um, human rights, if you start to violate human rights, serious violations like human trafficking, child abuse and so on, without of who you are, it doesn't matter if you are the most powerful guy in this world or whatever, you can be uh, brought to court. He signed already uh, a document for this and that was a very powerful thing. So signed and doing nothing with this document maybe you all know uh, what i'm talking about and otherwise afterwards i can send um, a, a link to what i'm talking about about this bill he did on the 21 or 23 of december but the people can remind him now about this new bill this this signed bill like okay from now on like if you have now a high power pedophile and you have proof you can take them to court worldwide mm. so it depends on the people on the people the moment the people start to unite in diversity to go for the main goals they want liberation healthy economic a healthy system they can manage it it's all based on a free will sounds good to me yes uh, here is somebody uh Asking, in a recent interview, you spoke about a multidimensional factor that is the root of corruption and the corruption you were involved in. Uh, can you please expand on what this source entails and how it can be stopped at its root? Yeah, well, what I was um, sharing was, of course, a mixture of, of my whole life because in my first life, I really had a big laugh about this Satanist and this Luciferian and, and the creator of heaven and earth. All these all this religions um, and beliefs were for me bullshit. I really believed the, the evil is inside of, of us. But yes, of course, when I st start um, to die and, and having my first out of body experience, not believing in the beginning what was going on with me, but yeah, later on you start to testify about what they were doing with you and it was confirmed, you know, step by step in my second life, I was becoming uh, more involved in uh, being also myself spiritual, sp um, embracing spirituality, uh, studying a lot of um, holy books and um, then, then a new life start to appear and then you start to discover that there is much more than only this what I call fourth dimension you have the length you have uh, 
the wide, you have height, but you have also time. That's the, the time frame is the fourth dimension. But then you start to discover that we are the cross point of um, the multi dimensions and frequencies. And on the moment you start to discover that, your awareness starts to grow um, and you start to be more and more involved in spirituality. You start to sense that there is really something going on in the other frequencies and dimensions. And then you start also to know that there are low frequency beings, what we call now the fallen angels of the jinns, who are really serving a sort of master. Like you have a creator of heaven and earth, we call that the light manifestation, and you have really um, a dark manifestation. And that, that guy or entity is named, for example, as Lucifer. So I just start in my own last 22 years, I step by step, I start to discover all the dimensions and frequencies based on my own experience, all the experience I didn't believe myself. So for me now, it's more than a belief, it's really knowing based on pr practical experience that we really have to face the fact that Besides the fourth dimension, we have this interaction <coughs> with other um, intel intellects, other, other beings. And in my case, um, it was developing in a positive way, um, even getting um, not uh, only a monologue, but also a dialogue. Like sometimes I have a question and before I speak out the question the answer is already given and of course you can freak freak out with your brains and thinking like oh this is your higher self but no in 22 years i really start to discover that outside of us there is really more and the ones i was serving in my um, first life i discovered in my second life that it was really existing and that it was all not a joke, including the sacrifice of children. Everything was real. For me, it was the joke, but afterwards I know it's real. And on the moment we people have a fight, on the moment we hate or we are angry, so-called lower frequency emotions, we are serving the low entities, we are serving the Luciferian organizations because they are sucking our energy. They have their high or orgies during wars. That's the best they can get. With wars, blood sacrifice from young men, young girls is the best. They have their orgies. So it's just afterwards in my second life, I start to discover that for me, and it won't have to be for someone else on this planet, but for me, this is real. And the, I also noticed that um, there are a lot of organizations and persons in this world, they want us out of this knowing. They are claiming, no, evil doesn't exist, like I did in my first life. No, it's all in ourselves. And if there is something higher, it's you, because you are the God and you have your higher self. They don't want to have you in a knowing that there is more than only us. They don't want it. Because mm -hmm. on the moment you start to be aware that there is really something going on in the other frequencies and dimensions, hey, if you know your enemy, you can um, fight them. Hmm. You can, and, and by the way, the power of the Luciferians in the higher frequencies and dimensions is broken. The power is broken. The only existence of their evil on this planet is going through the persons, through our beings. In the, in the old days, and this, this reminds me of one of the things I later understand what it was when it's about my old work and the high powers 
one of my colleagues once was well making sort of mistakes and not really listening and we were in a meeting with one of the high powers and he came to uh, my colleague and he put his hand on his chest and my colleague started to scream and scream and scream and what was happening this this human like us so powerful got also powers from the other dimensions because he was making a fire inside of the body of my colleague that's that was the reason why he was screaming so much mm -hmm. and from that day my colleague was so afraid of these powers because he was really feeling the power they have mm -hmm. it's interdimensional powers now in those days in the days are in present uh, to make you aware of what I'm talking about, we have now a lot of magicians in this world who can lift themselves up so they know how to um, block gravity. They can put uh, a mobile phone in a, in a glass without of destroying the glass. They can walk through glass and going um, vertical down the building they do all these magic tricks and nobody thinks further than oh this is magic they use this kind of powers so if you watch now the real magicians of this world you get already a little bit of a taste of the powers i'm talking about who are working through humans this high power humans are then hosts of interdimensional beings and this is where this is where you get the reptilian stories when you have this shape shifting when when they get a bit visible i think it's really interesting what you say there with these magicians because this is what i felt for a long time that these things that is not even fun to watch because there's something really really dark going on and i've been i've been called a lot you know that i'm a, a new age uh, I don't know, a hippie thing but with all of this love and light thing. But for me, that is so essential because if it's very dangerous for someone like myself if I sink down in the lower levels where yeah. these forces can get hold of me. Yeah. And it's only with gratitude and filling my heart every day and, and keeping myself in a loving space that I can continue. I, I feel that it's, uh, it makes me feel a lot better, but it's also... Uh, at a point of self-defense to keep my, my spirit very high at all yes. times. Yes. Um, what you're saying about hippie and new age, this, this is also the protocol of Zion. Uh, as long as humans worldwide will think in boxes, and the Dutch people, Holland is really specialized in it, think <laughs> only in boxes. But as long as we think in boxes instead of we are all brothers and sisters, real humans, we, we get this separation. We get this separation and it will continue. And it's all written in, in, the, um, in the protocols of Zion. When, when, when I share this information, just based on, I mean, I'm an unbeliever. I always have to experience myself things. Like if a fir fire is burning, I have to stick once my hand in the fire to say, okay, fire is burning. Before that, I don't believe it. So everything I share is based on practical uh, things, based on my real life, on, on daily life. And of course, if I get, if we get this interview online, of course, there will be a, a five percent attacking us all about the mm. things we are talking about because then we are the hippies or the new age or crazy or whatever. Of course, they will. will ignore it or deny it and that's the power they play ronald have you got these protocols as a pdf maybe we can uh, add it as a link to this webinar yes i have them in um, in english and in dutch but would uh, you mind sharing them yes of course that's excellent so we'll do that we'll add a link uh, underneath this uh, webinar and so i've got so many questions so i'm going to yeah. continue uh, oh. 
I drink uh, I drink some uh, clean, real clean, clean and healthy water. Yeah, so do I. I got uh, distilled water here, so let's party. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Uh, from Jan, he says, uh, the testimonies of cha child sac sacrifice and rituals available on the internet, truthful ones and growing in number, are the worst stories you can ever imagine. When you listen to them, uh, wait a second. Okay, uh, when you listen to them, uh, it feels it feels if the world is, the world is lost, there's no hope at all. Yeah, uh, it's impossible to Im improve the human race, but still it must be possible. Being aware of this darkness, this crime against humanity, how do we raise ourselves enough collectively to turn this situation around? Yes, yes, I can confirm the same emotion and, and hopelessness like oh my god how do we change this because when i was this three days in london it was not only my testimony it was also the testimony of a chinese doctor who escaped china it was about so many people who were really giving horror beyond imagination so if you get this picture you're really talking not about human beings, you're talking about a beast, a real beast. And it's of course, this expression is also a metaphor because we can find it in the Quran, for example. If you want to know a lot about evil, read the Quran. There are so much uh, uh, explanations and, and uh, writings about what kind of evil we are facing. It's a multi-dimensional being, a collective being with, with a lot of uh, manifestations. But again, the power is broken. They have no power anymore in our four dimensions. It's broken. It's done thousands of years ago already. On the moment we, the people, start to unite in diversity, to become one and not really like one, 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 like everybody's hugging each other. No, see it as a body. Our human body is a perfect model about what we can do worldwide. The tongue won't have to be hug hugging the thumb. They're connected, connected with each other. And of course they have their function. It's all fine. But on the moment we start to integrate ourselves as human race as one body in diversity stand up creating our own world the world we want it will happen because what i told you about politicians they are followers on the moment people stand up see it with brexit and there are more examples if they are free free to choose so don't come with the catalonia thing because that the, the people from Catalonia, in the north of Spain, from Barcelona and so on, they were accepting the system. They vote, they give their voice away, so they have to wait till the next election to change the whole system, because they, they were protesting and wanted independency. It was, um, you know, it's not so, f it's in the north of Spain, mm -hmm. Catalonia. But the power is, is that we are the through, through power, we are the real compassion, the real love, and we have a free will, and the free will will be respected. But we have to connect, we have to unite. And I will start to do this. This is my next stay, uh, phase in my life. I want to st will stick out my neck for the next stage. I I'm, uh, will, want to start the United People Movement worldwide. I want to write this summer the Declaration of Peace. So everybody who is starting to join and to sign the Declaration of Peace will create a new voice, new power for themselves because on the moment you agree that we end war and we will start to fulfill the Declaration of Peace, on the moment you sign for it and you put your free will on it, 
and it will connect it with all the other decisions who also want this new world we create, not the new world order, no, our world, our world of abundancy, then we have something going on. Because if that starts to raise in 1 million, 10 million, 100 million, and we have representatives in our, in our group who want to speak out for all the voices, then we have something going on. Then we can set up our cooperatives worldwide. We can create our new banking system, our new healthcare system, our new energy system. We can create whatever we want. It's in our hands. Mm -hmm. So this is coming up after the summer. And it will not be a fight. It's based on the free will. This is also a thing I, if, if I may, to make clear. When I was expressing it myself, when I learned my final lessons after being jailed in Belgium and break down, and when this um, uh, high-ranking 33-degree uh, masonry um, made himself visible as being a masonry 33 degrees because he was just a real good friend of me and I didn't know that he was this, but he knew that he will die in the future so he was breaking his own oath and he loved me so much that he started to share with me the, the last pieces of the puzzle I needed. From him I learned and later confirmed from others to create your own space. And okay, if I start a movement, I'm only one in my own space with my movement. Oh, changing the world, declaration of peace, everybody is laughing. But if people start to join my space, it will become your space as well. And if it's 10, it's a bigger space. Is it 1000, it's bigger. And so it can grow and grow and grow and grow. And then finally, my so to speak, creating my own space, is shared with everybody and it can be seven billion people creating their own space and that's hard that's without of fight and that's without of fear and and without of being harmed because they don't do anything against it because it's based on us the real power the real beings the real love the real free will this is our ticket out the only way you as long as you Support the old system, like voting every four years. Forget it. You give away your being. You give away your vote. It's no solution there. Mm. Well, you got number two here for your for your new uh, way. I will be very happy to to become the second one to follow you, this thing. Uh, I have so, a comment. So we have already a movement. We have a movement of two. Ola, Ola and Ronald. <laughs> <laughs> so, Rona, I have uh, a comment from my brother, uh, Shanti Ritam, in Sweden. He just said uh, he really loves and respects what you've been doing and, and he follows everything you do with a with, uh, big space in his heart. So, I think we got three there. Uh, right. the you see, hey. There it goes. You see, I, I really believe we can manage it. I really believe we can manage it. And it's not about me, but someone has to start it. I mean, yeah. No. If if the job is done, I really love to be in the countryside, creating my own permaculture, my own food, living in a community in harmony and peace. That's my main goal. Mm -hmm. That's my dream. I have no ambitions of being world leader or president of a bank or um, a movement. No, I'm just doing my my job mm -hmm. because I am for the children. That's my work. When I'm, if, if I'm representing something, it's the children of this world. That's yeah. where I go for. That's my real reason behind everything. Because I know how it is to become a child born in this planet. And that yeah. has to change completely. Do you know, so, the, the, the beautiful thing is that there's so many uh, that are, are starting similar things Yes. Or, or walking this way or trying so many on so many different levels that the only thing we need is just to connect these big uh, sort of like movements of, of uh, energy and just get it into yes. one direction. Yes. And game over. You know, but so, the point is we are not only flesh and blood and that I, I got out, of course, my own experience. I mean, if you are out of your body and you're watching yourself, you really you get really convinced about okay 
you are also spiritual, so you have a higher, higher body. Uh, let's say, call it the, the body of heaven, your real being. And that's energetic. So on the moment, based on the free will, we start to sign this declaration of peace in an energetic way. It's huge. It's very huge. It's so powerful. It's invisible, but so powerful. It's a declaration which is beyond the four dimensions because we are much more than the four dimensions. It will be in all the layers of frequencies of dimensions that you put your free will and declaration of peace on the map. That's so powerful. Mm. We have from Andre, I think uh, uh, from your country, he says, these masters, uh, what percentage uh, are European nobility or royalty of this so-called elite? Is there a percentage that you know of? No, no. I, 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 I mean, in the even what I'm sharing, like what I was working with, the 8,000, 8,500, it's from that time. I mean, we are talking now about 24, 25 years and beyond. Um, most of them are already, are already dead. Mm. Um, of course, you find them in all the layers. So also in, in royal families, um, everywhere you will find the rotten apple, everywhere. Mm. Because otherwise, I mean, it's the only way to keep track on your power. Um, you have to uh, influence all the layers. So that includes also all the people who are in this, um, what was involved in the question, like the royals and, and, and the other ones. Mm -hmm. It's everywhere. Do you know, Ronald, in my area, I mean, I'm focusing on false flag operations and assassinations and so on, just yes. because it's one very powerful tool they have against us because it is how they create a lot of the fear. Uh, yes. but, but what I experience is that they're ramping up the speed of these operations. They're getting more and more sloppy. It's getting, it feels like it's getting out of hand and that they're getting very, uh, I would say, afraid and frustrated. Uh, would, they, is, they, know, is, they know what's coming. Is, that is a correct in, interpretation. Yes, they know what is coming. They, they know, they know that the time is limited. Do you know, I, I heard this talk, uh, it was a TED talk, of, uh, it was uh, done by a cillionaire, I don't know his name, and he was rich, he became rich on, I have no idea, maybe some kind of rubber ceiling or something uh, really incredible, but he earned so much, mil uh, so much money. And he did a TED talk where he was talking straight to the people uh, in a similar position with so much money that, I mean, they could buy like 15 yachts or whatever, mm -hmm. but they were still uh, empty inside. Yes. And, and he said, he was talking to them saying that, please understand that we're coming to a point where the separation between the ultra rich and the dead poor normal people are getting so big that it's like lynching times. If we yes. don't, if they don't do something about it. So yes. he was talking to the so-called elite saying, please, brothers and sisters, wake up and start sharing, give back, because for your own sake, otherwise it's game over for you, or you yes. will do something really stupid, like the bomb or whatever, it's something really yes. incredibly stupid. Uh, but it's, with your knowledge of the, the, the people that you knew in these levels, is there any way to reach them or how to inspire them to take a step out of this darkness? Well, even in the old days, uh, I, I noticed that um, most of them in the high powers who are so empty, like the rich persons you were talking about now with all the yachts, it's the same. It's all everywhere the same. They are also born like us as a child. And inside of them, the child is still there. And the child is very afraid of this world. They created themselves. That's <laughs> the crazy thing about it. And more and more, we are, we are entering a period that the, this whole um, 
game will be finished. We are now in a phase that everybody on this planet, included them, will start to make a decision. So when they create horror, they will continue creating horror till the people will choose different. They will create now a fake uh, third world war. If they get the chance, they will create it. It will be a fake third world war in the Middle East. They will create it if it's needed. If they can go along with the game they are playing now. But most of them, and it's also in the banking world, I'm very connected still with the banking, a lot of them, most of them, want to go out of their own prison they created. But they don't know how, because they are not the heroes who are saying, yeah, I did this and that, and please, please spare me. No, they are very afraid about the people on this planet, because they are, of course, the majority, to be slaughtered in the whole bloodline. So they are very afraid. The only way to get them out, and most of them want out now, because they also need to make a decision, otherwise they end up in places they don't want to be, also not when they're dying, because when you're dead, you're, you're still alive, that's the problem. If you were dying and you were de dead, then it's fine. But no, after that, they know they will, to will have to face the, their own creations. So most of them want to go out. I get more and more signals of it. But as long as the people are staying in the positions they are now, forget it. They don't come out. They, they prefer to throw themselves from a building or to get accidents or whatever, yeah. or to continue the horror, to put more pressure on the people worldwide. Because the pressure, when, when you say about uh, this false flock, projects, these false flag operations, and they get more and more sloppy because you start recognizing all the patterns. They are not, they are not in the business of innovation. They do, their, they do their thing, and it's always the same because it was a, a proof that all the human beings are so bleh, like sheep. They buy it. I mean, now with Israel, with Netanyahu, presenting all the proof about our Iran, that um, the atomic bomb is there and, and um, we have to step in this country now. Neta, if you search, Netanyahu is, this, uh, is making this act already, I think for 20 years now, or at least for 12 years. But if you do a bit of research, now and then he make these announcements about, yes, if we don't take Iran out now, in, 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 in a few months, <coughs> they, will, they will drop the bomb. And it was never happening. Mm -hmm. So if we continue to support all these fake attacks, all these fake um, uh, f fear creating uh, um, things, they will continue. And, it, and they don't care um, anymore if, if people like Ola are, are uh, telling um, um, the truth about this false flag anymore because that's actually helping them as well. Um, it's good you make them people aware, but on the other hand, we are helping them as well. Eh? Because on the moment we are spraying the news about the truth, about what's really going on, all these false flags, and there are upcoming much more because they will put higher pressure on the humans. That's the only thing what is happening now. They want between now and 10 years that the whole, whole uh, game is over. That's the maximum. They want in 10 years the game finished. They prefer earlier, but they will raise the pressure and the terror and every fear they can create on humans. Why? to make a decision to go for it, to be eternal slave, convert as a battery, or liberate yourself as a human being and the whole planet. That's on stake. So slavery, slavery or liberation. That's, and they are cooperating in this because they are not the boss. 
the real ultimate boss is the light force, of course. Mm. So they're actually helping us by putting a fire under our butts so to make a decision yep. one way or the other. To burn away the ignorance. Because mm. one of our enemies is too much of ignorance. I mean, mm. so many experience you can see that someone who is dressed up like having no money falling on the street and nobody gives a damn and mm. passing by and when is a guy very nice with a nice suit falling on the street everybody comes to help him you know the ignorance oh, yeah, yeah. next one from iphone here uh, he asks is trump fighting the new world order or is it the other way around mr trump is doing his best to do his own agenda but he is not in the position he is not in the position he has to listen to the real masters so one way or the other if he wants it or not he is forced to fulfill the real agenda and you can call it the new world order agenda that's fine but this the agenda who is becoming now visible for example in the middle east and the positions he is taking now uh, like giving a recognition on the capital city of Jer uh, israel is now jerusalem and it's based on historical facts if you watch study history the um, the tribes the tribes of uh, the sub south israel in in the old days they had the city of jerusalem as capital city i i think 130 years so in the whole history of israel the the jewish tribes who were then in the kingdom of israel had jerusalem for 130 years as their capital in the rest of the whole history they cannot claim to be their capital so if if you have these false claims and president trump is getting along with these claims well he cannot be aware for sure that can but he also can follow up the agenda the higher agenda they play out and the thing they want to create is a bigger israel and they want to raise up the third temple of jerusalem so in in that perspective I understand the moves of Donald Trump and it gives you already a sort of answer that besides the good things he is doing based on his own agenda because he's a human being who cares he also follows the higher agendas of the so to speak new world order it's in, in his position is unavoidable and you see um, when the when the elections were not there that they were still in this race with hillary hillary gave already the message when i'm elected i will attack iran trump didn't say that no he was talking about creating peace and being friends with russia and so on and so on but but see what happens now he is in 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 uh, the position of president mm. he's now a sort of master puppet and step by step he start to follow actually the same agenda because now also he is attacking okay it's still by words but you know they are trying now already to create a situation that they will attack iran so it's the same agenda so what else is new now uh, th that's the point if you are uh, elected president you're a master puppet you are a master puppet. You're not not really completely in, try, in, 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 in charge. They don't want to hear it because they are all, of course, the tough guys who arrange everything, but it's not. I tell you, in my opinion, the, the last real president uh, was Kennedy. That was the... Yeah, the, and, and, and this guy was coming out of, of, um, of this power play. Mm -hmm. he, 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 he was a sort... In the end, he was a sort of rebellion. Mm. Uh, 
his his free will and and his consciousness uh, conscience was uh, speaking and his heart was speaking and he put his um, life on the line because he created also um, if it's about what the question from the federal reserve he started also to create um, out of the government the dollars mm -hmm. so he created a new financial uh, system uh, he did um, very good things in the right direction to re liberate the american people and yeah he he was break he was breaking his contract he was breaking the the rules he agreed on in the beginning yes and Ronald, we we have about 10 minutes left uh, i know that you are very involved in uh, creating a new type of banking uh, would you uh, mind uh, explaining a bit about that well it's it's actually in line with the thing i was saying already that um you're right about this banking system it's also a tool like if you want to create a nice garden you need some tools to create this nice garden and this new banking system the b of joy is a tool who can serve humanity and make the whole world liberated then you don't have this central banking system and this anymore <laughs> because we we if we choose different we can have a, a banking system who serve us and it will be a cooperative system so we are all members and owners of the cooperative so we have also everybody has a vote right so on the moment uh, someone say let's invest uh, because we all together start to invest in a good world in the world we want and if someone say no let's go for nuclear nuclear power back to the old world because we can make more profit then of course based on our votes in the cooperative we can say no 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 we agreed together all to go for a good stewardship of all life based based on the universal declaration of human rights except the rule of united nations because united nations you have to kick out you have need united people so based on on this high standard of ethics and values we create a, a banking system and our own currencies uh, who are only a tool for us to serve us and to create the world we want to have together so it's it will be a part of the movement just a tool to create the world and to implement the world we want to see that's the basics of this banking system and it will be out out of all these nasty mechanisms we have now like i said the central banks we can get rid of all this old system and we also will not work with uh, interest anymore um, creating money uh, based on the death death contracts we have now will be gone too we can base it base it on our value because we are the only value um, to know more about this banking system you can um, go in a search machine and you type in B of joy and you will find the website and you can read more about um, the, the basics of this um, banking system who is also just a tool to liberate us and I was spending the last seven years of my life to get this tool really created and covered by people and also now backed up already a bit by money but we are still in the process of developing but for me it's a sort of okay now it's ready to continue with the people and we can guide it a bit more with the other team members but now it's up to the people to to embrace this um, tool or not it's up to them but the tool is available um, it's the you know if you if you change the banking system the financial system you have the main main key for real change worldwide because this is how they did it with the old world as well they did it from 1694 and they end up the most to be the most powerful ones of this planet now owning nearly everything we can make this in a reverse of by and for the people and this is why i created this tool it's not a goal on his own my goal is liberation of every human on this planet for the children they really deserve it 
Well, I can just say hallelujah to that. Yes, and it will come, it will happen. I, I'm, it will happen. More and more people get aware, and they come out with the heart. The heart is our biggest tool to um, change the world. Mm. From the moment we start connected with the heart. Mm. Do you know, Roland, um, you did your first interview with my dear friend Irma uh, Schiffers and, yes. and Hodert. And uh, I was so, so pleased. I knew about these interviews way before anyone else because I was okay. sort of in the background just uh, applauding. And uh, so once, once it went live, I had all these questions where people were asking me, but can you really trust Ronald? Can you really, yes. I mean, how can you say, how can you back this guy? But uh, I, I said, I feel my, uh, I follow my gut, my gut feeling. Yeah. I, and I said, when you look in the eyes of Ronald, yeah. what, what do you see? What do you see? And that will give you the answer. Mm -hmm. Because uh, I get a, it's very hard for me to understand the dark things you're talking about that you've been involved in, because that is yeah. not what I see in your eyes now. Um, no, I become, I become totally myself. Different. I become myself. Yeah, I, I'm sure your eyes were very different in those days. Yes, I become myself. And um, I have the intention to um, publish a book about my life story to get, give the people more and more details about my life. That means I will also dig uh, for photos of my youth, looking for some, some things worth to show to give the people more and more a, a bit of an impression about my life. I will also search for the document where they give me in Belgium uh, a penalty of nine million to pay. I just will dig in uh, for some details, more details and, and more proof to back up um, the truth I, I'm, I'm speaking about. It's a sort of testimony I will publish um, so it will be in more details than the interviews who are given till uh, till now actually um, yeah and I, I know that um, you know that's also one of the the bonuses of the old powers they don't care they don't care uh, on the moment you start damaging them they care but on the moment you uh, keep your word on the contract not giving names of persons and organizations, um, you're fine and you're serving them indirectly because you make people aware and if they don't choose different, they can say, hey, this idiot Ronald and all the others were telling you on and on and on because I was not telling anything new. It was already known. There were Before me were so many other people telling you already the same story. And if, if we are all ignore it, fine, but they will stay in power and they have the right to stay in power because they can tell all the people on this planet, you knew, but you ignore it. And that's where they're heading for. So indirectly, giving the, the story, they know a lot of people say, oh, this is Disney, this can be only fantasy. Let's make him the best actor of 2017. Well, I didn't receive the, the, the money. I didn't receive the prize for it. No, sometimes the truth is so ugly, we can't believe it because it's not in ourselves. It's not part of you. You're maybe a good loving person who is not able to kill, let's say 500,000 children in Iraq because that was happening. And, this lady Albright was telling it in your face on television when they asked her about the 500 million children who were slaughtered in Iran, in Iraq, sorry. Mm. We ignored it. And she said it was worth to pay the price. And we ignored it. 500 million, 500,000 children slaughtered in Iraq. So who to blame? Mm. Maybe we have to stop with blaming each other and looking out of ourselves. Maybe it's time we take our responsibility about life, about our being, 
to let our inner child out of this world in a peaceful world. Maybe we have to stand up. It's just a hint. Mm. And Roland, this is where I so, uh, I'm so grateful for you to do this because I really hope that this will inspire other people that used to be in your situation or that are in the situation where you used to be yeah. uh, to inspire them to get the courage to get the balls and step forward. Uh, and instead of us blaming, I would say, let's start encouraging, you know, yes. because they fear that we're going to chop them up and lynch them and burn them on a, on a fire. But there are other ways. You see this, this pointing. Yeah. We are always pointing like you, you. But if I turn around this arm, this arm, what do we see? Three fingers are pointing in my direction. Mm. I found that someone was doing this with me. Like I point to someone and he said, just turn around your hands. There mm. are three fingers in your direction. Start there. And that's the only way. Start with yourself, with your inner world. Make mm. peace with yourself. Come out. Come in balance. Come in healing. And then the time will come. You are getting powerful and will change this world because we, we can. Together we can. It's wonderful to hear. I know my intention is always, I mean, I'm talking about a lot about people being mur murdered in operations and assassination. Yes. But my intention is to break the spell, break the spell of fear and liberate us out of this. But it's like sometimes you need to dig into this very ugly area. Yes. Uh, just yes. like with the cancer growth, you need to expose, you need to get it out. Even though it's painful and smelly, you need yes. to do it. Otherwise, it will kill you. And the work and you're, the work you're doing in general, maybe not every detail, but I mean, we are imperfect. But in general, you're so spot on <laughs> in all your work, in all your investigations. I mean, you were, you were coming from another angle as an observer. I was the one who was investing in creating the mess you were observing. <laughs> it's the other side. But this is, yeah, and it's fantastic because it helps me a lot because I'm sort of on the outside in a fog trying to figure it out. And then when I get confirmations from people like you or Cody yeah, Snodgrass, yeah. who, by the way, also had a near-death experience and uh, had 22 years of silence before he decided to step out. I thought that was quite interesting, him yeah. being a black op and you from the banking world, almost very parallel roads going yes. into this and now coming to the same point because he's also totally backing the light and seeing that as the way. So it's but wonderful to see it. We, we, we were only in the field to manage the money because, you know, the well-known saying, follow the money and you start knowing everything. Mm -hmm. That expression was our biggest enemy. We have to create it all the time smoke screen above smoke screen above smoke screen above smoke screen to cover up the follow the money system because there are always people intelligent smart aware who are tracing the tracks of money that was our biggest fear Well, I was sniffing down you, but I was right behind you. <laughs> but anyway, you know, uh, I would very much like to end with a prayer. Uh, I'm not a religious person, but I have uh, our Raja Yoga teacher, Nel Nichelaram, has this beautiful prayer that I absolutely love. And uh, I was thinking maybe, I think you had some kind of prayer or something like that in Breda as well. If not, uh, this is the one I would like to end with, and then it's up to you. It goes like this. May the entire universe be filled with peace and joy, love and light. May everyone, and especially the ones who heard us, be filled with peace and joy, love and light. May the light of truth overcome all darknesses. So victory to that light. Amen.
So, if they want to attack you, now you're a religious leader. Any last words? <laughs> no, the fun is, if they, oh, hear, if, they, if they hear this, when you were preaching or praying, now they can attack you like, oh, Ole will become a religious leader. So then you get a new place in the square of Rome where they are collecting but, all the religions. <laughs> but I tell you, I've been, I've been using this prayer for years and uh, somebody tried to really uh, attack me by making a, a video and it was like an animation of Agent Double O, uh, Agent Double O Light and Love. <laughs> that's like what kind of attack is that it's like a compliment i'm using it now on lectures because it's really funny well but, you, thank you for your uh prayer it's very powerful and it is so powerful because this is also a thing people have to remember watch the words you're speaking we are creators mm -hmm. on the moment you start speaking out words they have the power of creation. So your wish is also a creation for a manifestation who can be done based on the free will of the people worldwide. So then it can become a reality and it will be a beautiful reality. It will and it's coming soon, I'm telling you. <laughs> and then I'm going to have a cold beer with you and a lot of other people <laughs> and celebrate. <laughs> Ronald, thank I have. Uh, there are so many people in the chat that are thanking you for for doing this for us and uh, taking. You're the all time. welcome. And, and please, uh, please, people of this world, be your own hero. We are all all heroes. Forget the program they uh, put on us by birth, and it was done through your loving parents. I hope they were loving parents, but it's all program. Read. The protocols of Zion start to discover who you really are. We are the creators. We can create whatever we want, but we have to do it together. That's our most powerful part of being aware. So stand up and start doing it. And I hope this uh, webinar will help to inspire other whistleblowers, people in uniform, people in the military, SWAT teams, police. You name it, so many in this machine that are designed, totally compartmentalized, but to destroy all of us. So yes. it's uh, up to each and everyone to look in the mirror and see what is my part? Am I in any way or form part of this? Yep. And if so, then stop it. Yes, and these are the final words. Um, and it's not to create fear, it's just creating a reality who is there. We all have to face the fact that if we uh, don't choose different we also choose and it will become in the end of the day in now and 10 years and it will go faster than faster it will be really black and white really the dualistic game will end and it means fully destruction or, or creating our own world yay baby that's the one yes and if it's, if it's about real destruction, uh, my personal belief has uh, also a hidden uh, sec secret uh, weapon. I believe in Jesus Christ. And I was re reading his uh, sayings in several scriptures, also out of the Bible. And he made a promise because he um, uh, uh, neutralized all the uh, dark forces and he overcome death. This is why we never will die. And he gave a guarantee that on the moment this world will be destroyed, that no flesh will be safe. He and his army, and that can be UFOs or whatever, I don't want to fill it in, will save us as well. In other words, Jesus was saying that the universe is watching us, and if we are going that crazy that we will uh, based on free will full of ignorance let them fulfill their goal the goal i had in my first life if they want to succeed to destroy all life on earth 
then still, out of this unconditional love, the being, the creator of heaven and earth, will send his armies to, to, uh, to save all life on earth, because earth is a very important planet in this whole um, manifestation of life creations in frequencies and dimensions. So in the end of the day, and I don't give this positive message like, okay, we can be lazy and doing nothing because in the end of the day we will be saved. No, that's the ultimate guarantee they gave if it's needed, but then it's not on behavior or on behalf of us. Then it's on behalf of all the living beings in this universe and dimensions and frequencies because if earth will be destroyed completely it will give a chain reaction on the rest so then it's not about us anymore no but and we I are wanna... in a position we are in the position we are on the point of the cross yep. we are at the center and what is really important, I think, is that uh, what you mentioned before, how fear is so important for their agenda. Yes. That fear is only in the mind. It's nothing real. It's not yes. out there. There are risks, there are dangers, but the fear is only in your mind. Yes. So if you can learn to let go of that and control uh, yes. yourself with loving thoughts instead, then we are on the way. Lu and, loose. Yes. Loose, and loose also... Fear. Yeah. And also, just because things look scary and, and threatening yes. doesn't mean it's over. The game ain't over until it's over. Yes. Th this um, uh, ignorance, fear, um, and lies, all these bad habits, actually, these low energies, are the main weapons and main tools to keep us down. And it's illusionary. It's illusionary. Sometimes when they attack me, sometimes I get monsters out of dimensions. Really, one millimeter in front of my nose. Wow, you get really a moment of scareness. Like one, this attack is suddenly there. You get really scared, and I'm not uh, shitting in my pants that that I don't do anymore. I did that only the first time when I put a gun on my head to shoot me. That's only one time you get this fear reactions in, in your pants with sh shitting in your own pants. But, but still, the attacks are there sometimes and, and they put it just in, fa in front of you, really based on fear. And on the moment you say, go, I do it in the name of Jesus Christ, go, it go. That powerful are we. We can block all this fear illusions they create in front of you and they nearly touch you nearly yeah that far it goes and with that i think it's time to finish we're like uh, <laughs> 10 15 minutes over time oh yeah but anyway once <laughs> again thank you thank you so much <laughs> and, uh, i hope maybe we can do this another time in the future as well Yes. And all the very best from all of us on uh, your, uh, the next step on your uh, trip here towards freedom. So once again, thank you so much. And please thank your family as well for uh, letting you have this time with us. Yes, they are the real power behind me. Without yeah. of my family, I couldn't manage it. Exactly. It's so easy to forget the family behind it, but they pay a yes. high price for everyone yes. who steps forward as yes. well. Yes, a very so high please price. please thank them as well for us. You're and all welcome. That, and You're with welcome. that, all of you all over in Brazil and Sweden <laughs> yeah. and Portugal and Spain and Germany and Unions and wherever, please have a great, great day or night or We will morning. see. We will um, see each other again. Well, yeah. <laughs> Bless you all. Oh, yeah. Hey, hey that's Jante. nice. Chanty. On the back screen. Bounce. Oh. There's a lot of people out there. Anyway, right. you have, take care, everyone, and go out. Don't spread fear. Spread love and unity, yes. and we'll sort this out. Okay? Yes. Thank and you. The beer is on me once we sorted it. <laughs> take care. <laughs> <laughs> bye bye. Bye.